Hello everybody and welcome to today's tutorial. As part of Macrame Week, today I'm going to be showing you how to do Chinese crown knots. So these are a really fun macrame knot that you will be learning today that I find is fantastic for using in multiple different ways. So it gives you this really interesting looking square shaped cord, which I've got a nice big piece here so that I can show you. So see that? It gives you this sort of cubic looking shape, but there's quite a few different ways that you can use it and sort of work with it to get slightly different effects. So anyway, as I said, I'm going to be sort of showing you the basics on how we get started with your crown knots, how to do the actual knots themselves, how to do them so that it gives you this twisted pattern as well. Um, and then finally, I'm going to show you how you add on a gorgeous pendant to your little piece as well. So. All of those things are going to be covered in today's tutorial. Uh, just in case you missed it yesterday, we did our first ever live premiere on YouTube, which was was really fun, actually. Um, kind of allowed me to, to chat with you guys, which was a nice change, because usually I'm here demonstrating and I don't get to to interact as much with, with uh, everybody, but hopefully um, if you missed that one, you'll be able to catch up onto it. I'll show you what it looks like in a minute. Um, also on Wednesday, I did Square Knot Macrame, which it's all part of this one big week of macrame that we're doing that's centered around our jewelry makers collection, our macrame jewelry makers collection. So if you haven't seen that, there's a little link at the bottom uh, which says, you know, take a look at this week's related products and kits and whatnot. Inside there, I'll show you what one of the, the different colorways actually looks like in a minute, the one I'm going to demonstrate with. Um, but yeah, it's a fabulous little kit that will cover everything I've done this week. So the one kit, you'll make lots and lots of different projects, but everything that you, uh, I'm teaching this week, you'll learn in it. Plus it's got some free instructions, all sorts. It's really, really good. Um, I see we've had lots and lots of people getting theirs nice and early already. But hey, if you haven't got one, or if you want to get another one, feel free to jump over to the website and grab yours uh, while they're still stock. So, let's take... Oh yeah, one more thing. Let's just take a little look at this. So, if you didn't uh, see it yet, last Friday's tutorial... I made this gorgeous little love heart, puffy love heart pendant with right angle weave. Um, if you missed that tutorial, you can go back and watch that one. But I just thought I would let you know the sale for the little hearts and also for the um, uh, the the pearl bundle that we did last week. Uh, they're going to be going off sale very, very soon. So if you click the little link in the description there where it says, you know, see previous and upcoming shows and whatnot, if you click on that, you'll be able to find both the Pearl Hearts and this little Love Heart set here uh, so that you can get that one. So if you want to get the savings on the little Love Hearts, make sure you jump onto the website because you can get all five of them, which each um, each kit makes three pendants, so 15 in total, uh, less than two pounds a pendant. So really, really good bargain if you're quick. Right, let's see who's here, shall we? Uh, let's take a little look. Who have we got today? Shall we just take a quick little look? We've got... Uh, oh, Jermaine's joined us. She's travelling off to London today to visit my sister, but she still managed to, to join us. We've got Purple Penny here. Doris is here, we've got Monica, uh, we've got Andrest. Hello, I don't recognize your name, so welcome if you're new. Uh, Jan is here, she's a regular. We've got Karen and Nina, Doris. Wayne is here, we missed you yesterday, Wayne, but um, you know, I'm glad to see you here today. Seema's here, lots and lots of people. Wow, lots and lots of comments already. Um, and then we've got one which I'll pop it up on the screen. Uh, we've got Birgit here, she says, Hello to everybody. I don't think I've seen your name before, so I thought I'd pop it up on the screen and just uh, give you a little welcome, just in case it is your very, very first stream. Uh, which, if it is your first stream and you are brand new to the streams, put a comment in and say so. Let us know that uh, you're new here and you've just joined the family or you've only just found us. Um, but yeah, so as I said, today I am going to show you how to create some really, really lovely things with the Chinese crown knots. 
So I'm going to be using, uh, I don't need, I'll get all these other bits, oh no, I do need this one. Uh, I'll get a few of these other bits out of the way. I'm going to be using the woodland uh, bundle today, but I'm going to let you guys choose the colors that I'm going to use. So I'm going to demonstrate with the one mil cord, but we need to pick two colors that will go nicely together. Um, this is my little pendant just here that I'm going to use. So of course, if you wanted to, you can sort of put it into a little bracelet form and attach it uh, onto a bracelet if you prefer. But I'm going to show you how to do the necklace with the one mil. It's a little bit bigger, so easier to see. So if you want everybody, uh, comment in right now and let us know which two colors shall I demonstrate with to go with this beautiful pendant. So we've got, I'll put them in their sort of color order. We've got the, well, should be the other way around, doesn't matter. Uh, we've got uh, the brown, we've got the sand, we've got the cream, and we've got the olive. So pick two colors that you think will go really lovely together with this little pendant. Maybe the, the brown and the sand could be a nice combination, or maybe for something a little lighter, maybe the cream and sand color, or the cream and the brown, or maybe, do you know what, this could be really nice, just sort of something a bit different, definitely living up to that woodland name, the olive and the sand, I don't know. Comment in with your with your comp uh, sort of your your suggestions, and I will make up. I will uh, you know whichever guy one you guys go for. Uh, I will I will have a look. Um, we've got Jackie here. She says hello from Canada. Hello to you too, Jackie. We've also got Julia um, as well. Uh, so if you've got any questions for Jermaine, by the way. She says, I don't have much, whoops, clicked it away too quick. I don't have much battery, so I can only chat for a short while. So Jermaine's not here for too long. I think she's possibly in the car still uh, on the way to London. Um, but yes, uh, what's everybody's thoughts? We've got sand and cream, olive and sand, brown and sand, brown and cream, cream and brown. Pretty much every combination has been listed thus far. Um, let's see. I might go with, I'll just show you once more what the different design will look like. So here, for example, is my purple. So I've got a light purple and a dark uh, purple there. We've got two different reds as well, which I've got a dark red and a light red here, uh, which I'm going to show you this one with the red pendant a bit later. Um, let's see, uh, brown and sand, brown and cream, I like the olive and sand, sand and cream, olive and sand. Okay, uh, let's go, yep, let's go gr green and the sand, the olive and the sand, I think that's going to be a really nice combination. We've got a few people um, uh, who, who have said that one, and then where is it, Dawn, there was a question from Dawn, I missed it, um, here we go. Uh, Dawn asks, how do I find my uh, the past demos, please? So I'll just show you really quickly on the Bead Spider website, just in case you're new like Dawn and you want to watch. You can, of course, watch all of these on our YouTube channel. But otherwise, if you head to the Bead Spider website, which looks like, um, wait a minute, looks like this. This is the Bead Spider website. There's a couple of ways to get there. So if you want to click... On the little link at the top, I've highlighted it brown where it says, uh, purple, where it says kits and tutorials. If you come down here, you can see video tutorials and that will take you to the video tutorials page. From here, you can see, here's the, the crown knot one, which I'm doing today, which if you're coming to this later, potentially you're watching it right here, right now. Um, this was yesterday's... Um, premiere tutorial that we did, the Square Not Macrame tutorial. So all three of these are related to today. Then we've got pearls, we've got hearts, which that I showed you at the beginning on the left there, um, our mosaic. And you just keep scrolling down. If you want, you can click that button that says load more. And then we get back towards Christmas and then even earlier. 
Halloween is there, Crystal Kitty Cats, and just keep going back. There's so many tutorials. We've been doing a couple per week for quite a while now, so you can see there's a lot of tutorials. Otherwise, you can go on to the um, YouTube channel or Facebook and watch them all on there as well. There's a, there's a lot. There's a lot. But anyway, coming back to our homepage, just really quickly, if you click the link in the description, that says check out the kit and whatnot. It's exactly the same as pressing the big purple button that says view all related products underneath um, the picture of today's tutorial. So here are the four different colorways. We've got the purple, we've got the Scarlet Kiss, which I think is lovely, uh, the Woodland Escape, which is what I'm going to demonstrate with today to start with, and then the Ocean Dreams as well. But then I've also got all of these patterns and all sorts of goodies down here. Looks like we're out of stock of the macrame boards now. Uh, but yeah, everything that's in the bundles as well, you can find it all the way down here. Lots and lots to choose from uh, if you want to uh, get extras or things. Um, but don't forget, in the actual bundles, you can add to them. So for example, if you choose the Woodland Escape and you want to get another pendant, add one in. If you want to have some more of the crystal donuts, they're really lovely, these ones. I should show you them. Add one in. If you go, do you know what? I want to make some more with the half mil. Add some extra half mil in if you want. Um, some more clasps, whatever it is. Add them in. And then when you add them to basket, you'll get that same level of discount. So if you have a look on this one, for example, the olive green smooth and slinky, they are usually two pounds. You can get two of them for that price. They're half price, 50% off and it will just automatically add everything in at that discounted price. So if you wanna have a look at that, that's how to do it. But let's get on with some tuition, shall we? So let's just hide this little comment and bring it back over here to my face, shall we? Uh, here we go. So, whoops, wrong button. Uh, so, yes, I'm going to demonstrate with the, the sand color and the olive. So let me just grab myself some. I should have been doing that while I was doing the tutorial. So I've got myself a little bit of the sand color. You need to give yourself probably somewhere in the region of... Um, a few meters, if you want to do the necklace, you need quite a lot. You need eight meters or so per color, which can get quite unwieldy, but I'm going to show you exactly how you can deal with it uh, to make the process much, much easier for yourself uh, if you're if you're wanting to do the um, the necklace uh, with those eight meters. You'll see it's, uh, it's a bit of a hodgepodge home job that I've done. But anyway, you need, I'm going to do for the bracelet, about two meters per cord is plenty, maybe a little bit more if you want to do a longer bracelet. So I'll just measure out a couple of meters rough. It doesn't matter too much. I'll give that a little cut. And there's my sand color. And now let's go with the olive. Just grab myself a little bit of the olive as well. You want to have about the same amount uh, just to make life nice and easy for you. So let's just measure a little bit out. So like I said, about two meters for a bracelet, a little bit more if you want to do um, a larger one um, or the necklace, you need about eight meters. So here we go. I've got my sand color here and I've got my olive color as well. And then of course, this is going to become my pendant. So the way that this works um, here we go. This is uh, a fun little comment. Um, here we go. Anne says, I'm looking forward to this because I, uh, I don't think I have seen Crown Knot before. Uh, it's quite a rare one. The reason we've gone for it is it's called, originally, it's called Chinese Crown Knot. And seeing as it's um, Chinese New Year, just next week, uh, I thought this would be the perfect one. Hence why I thought the red would make for a really nice bracelet, but I'm going to put a pendant on this anyway, but you can see it makes for a lovely, a really nice bracelet. It's unisex, and if you want it to be darker on the top, you can do that. If you want it to be the, the lighter on the top, but wait till you see the different ways you can use it. There's quite a few. There's quite a few. So anyway, like I said, what I'm going to do is I've got my two threads. I'm going to find approximately... Well, not approximately. I'm going to find the middle of my thread. So I've got all four ends here like this. I'll just make sure I've got my two threads exactly the same length. Uh, so let's just bring them all the way down to the end. And a little bit, little bit longer with the green. 
So let's just trim that green one pretty much in position. Just because I know, I mean, ugh, wasted time. Need not have done it, but doesn't matter. So anyway, I've got my two threads together now, all four ends here, and then bring it and find the middle. So there we go. Here's the middle. And essentially, the way this works, you can use a macrame board if you want to. Um, but yeah, there's... Uh, it's quite easy on a macrame board if you want to start it off, but it's not a necessity. So essentially what we're going to do is create a cross shape, like this just here. So see that? There's my little cross that I've got. I've made myself a nice little cross here. And what I'm going to do is start creating my very first crown knot. Now, if you wanted to add on a little clasp, uh, sorry, a little... Um, piece like this in the center so that you were making it into a necklace or a bracelet you could put it at the point where this cross is so essentially you would thread one side uh, put them both in here and then bring this to the middle so that it will uh, you know sort of be in the center of the end of your crown knot design so that's a nice way that you can use the uh, either the snake or the owl that come with this one I mean you can use the the really nice peridot piece as well if you prefer but uh, I'm gonna have a go just doing the plain braid I won't put a piece on today uh, but essentially you can use like a pin if that's easier for you but essentially I'm gonna just sort of f do it free today so first things first I'm going to be working sort of to create my first crown knot I'm gonna be working kind of clockwise so I'll take this one here and I'm going to pass it over the top of this edge one here. See that? So I've created sort of over the top like this. Now I'm going to take this one and I'm going to come over the top of this one here that we've just bent around the corner. And I'm going to go over the top of this next one here as well. So see that? Essentially what we've done is go from this cross over. And now this one comes around and over and over. So now we're going to do exactly the same thing with this sand one. So we're going to go, see it goes underneath here. So we'll go over the top and over the top of the next one. And now to finish off the last of our little crown knots, I'm going to bring, so this is my central cross. I'm going to bring my last thread across. So it's going to go over the top, over the top, and then inside of this little D shape that we've created here. So into the D underneath now. And then you'll see we've created this little big sort of square box shape. It's kind of like when you're um, folding the cord. You can use any cord for this one. This is our smooth and slinky cord, which if you haven't seen it before, is an absolutely gorgeous quality cord because you can very easily undo it and redo it again. Let me just show you a little bit of it nice and close. It's got a fabulous feel to it. Um, five strands of man-made silk rayon woven around a polyester core for strength. So anyway, this is the cord that I'm using. Just thought I would mention that. Uh, because uh, this is the, the the sort of cord that I'm going to be using. But essentially, you can use any cord that you want for this. Um, but, you know, if it's a waxed cord, you might find it's not so forgiving. This stuff, it's got no waxed, so it's very, very forgiving. So what I'm going to do now is just very slowly, I've, as I've created my little box, as it were, because these are also called box knots, I'm going to just pull little by little all of these threads one by one to make my box even smaller. See that? Now it's even smaller. So let's just keep going once again. I'll try and keep my hand on top of this central knot to keep it nice and central so it doesn't move. And just pull all of those threads slowly inwards. For the first one, you need to make sure you do this nice and slow, one at a time, around until it's almost closed up. Now what I'm going to do is just press my finger on that little knot and then do it once more all the way until it's pretty much completely closed. And just keep going around until you've got them all completely closed. 
So there we go, keep pulling the bottom one, then the left, then the right, and until it's smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, until what you have in the middle looks like a Battenberg cake a, a bit. Uh, this is called your box knot. So this is where we, we sort of wanted to get ourselves to. So this is where it all comes together as we've pulled it nice and tight now. You can see that lovely quality of the cord as well, the, the weave of it as well, which is quite nice. Um, but it's, it's lovely and soft to feel. Uh, so if you haven't tried it before, definitely have a go at this cord because it is lovely. So let's do our next one. So I'm not going to make this one quite as large as I did the previous one, but essentially what we're going to do this time... So you know how last time I went clockwise? This time we're going to go anti-clockwise. So exactly the same, but back in the same direction that we just started from. So this time now anti-clockwise I'm gonna go over the top I'm gonna to make this one a bit smaller because it doesn't need to be so big I just wanted you to see then I'll bring this one over the top of both of these get it nice and firm there we go then I'll bring my next one over the top of both of these and now lastly we take our last thread over the top over the top and underneath and then when we pull it all tight, you'll see we create our next little box knot shape. So just slowly but surely pull it all in towards the center to give you that nice little box shape. So just press your finger on the top, pull, pull, pull all the four of the cords until eventually, see that it's almost, wait, let's zoom in and take a look. That's almost closed. And then one more little pull on each of the threads, like this. And then it's almost closed. I'll just pinch it between my fingers like this. And give it a nice, firm tug on all four. And there you go. Now it's pretty much nicely in position. Nice and firm. Look at that. Very good. I'm happy with that now. Let's just pull that up once more. And that will give us our next little box knot. It doesn't matter if it comes a little bit loose. This cord is very, very forgiving. Uh, so you don't need to worry about this. Um, so let's just zoom out a little. And now we're going to continue again, but working again in clockwise direction. So starting here, I'll just come over the top of this one doesn't matter where you start from, uh, because in the end, they all sort of interlink over the top of each other. So you've just got to remember clockwise, then anti-clockwise, clockwise, then anti-clockwise, and so on until you're completely done. So let's just get this one here. What do you guys think uh, of the of this little design? Simpler than you thought it might be? It is a very, very easy little technique that you learn in this one. Um, nice and fun, but the wait till you see how the effect looks. It's really lovely. So I'll pull this one quite tight, pull this one quite tight, and the next one, and the next. And just for these first few, it is definitely easier to work on top of a surface. Once you've done about four or five knots, uh, you will not need to leave it on a table anymore. You can really get cracking on with it, which I'll show you in just a second. And I think Jax here agrees. She says, mmm, Battenberg cake. Do you know what? I'd love a Battenberg cake today too as well. Um, I think that would be delicious. Um, so now one more time, I'll just show you a quick little way to know which way you need to turn so that you keep doing it the right way. So essentially what happens um, is the best way to know which way you need to go is if you have a little look at the... Let's use a, a needle and come in even closer. If you, you have a little look just here, see how this is on this corner, and then this one is on the same kind of corresponding corner, and again, and again. So the way that you need to turn it, if you want to create that lovely um, sort of crown knot box shape like, uh, like we have here, if you want to get that nice square shape happening, you need to make sure you turn back towards the corner. So if see how it's right here, you go 
towards the nearest corner. So this one towards the nearest corner. This one here towards the nearest corner and that one again towards the nearest corner. So that's the easy way to know which way you've got to go. So as you can see here, I'm, to, I'm near this corner, so I need to turn it towards this corner here, over the top. I'll do the next one again, it's this one, we're going to continue, and that's how you know which direction, whether or not it's clockwise or anti-clockwise, that you need to go. So there we go, let's do this. I'll zoom out a teeny weeny touch. Do the next one, over the top. And now we'll do our last one, over the top and into this little piece inside that loop that we created right at the beginning. And then ready, let's just pull it all nice and tight together. I'll do my two green ones and then I'll do my two sand ones. Get it all nice and tight into the center. There we go. And now I'll just pinch the top and pull, pull, pull all four of them till it's really, really firm there. I didn't get a cup of tea today. I should have poured myself out a, tup of, a cup of tea, but since I'm here all alone, um, uh, there we go. Uh, I didn't have myself a cup of tea. Uh, Doris says, what is it? Matthew, do you have all four patterns as one or do I have to get them separate? I'll just show you really quickly on the website once more, very, very quickly, just so that no one makes the mistake and you don't have to pay for anything that you don't need to buy. So if we take a little look here, wait a minute, here is our woodland one that I'm demonstrating with today. So if you take a look all the way down here, included completely for free, so 100% discount on the instructions. You've got your crown knot instruction there, completely free. You've got your goddess macrame bracelet, which was yesterday's video, which I forgot to show you actually, and the square knot video. All four of them, which this one actually has two patterns inside of it, the, the guide to square knot, all of them are completely free. If you don't get the bundle though, if you don't wanna get the bundle, if you just go towards the tutorial page, they are here, all three of them, individually. So the square knot, the crown knot's there, the goddess is here, and the square knot is here, all three of them. So make sure you don't need to buy these three if you're getting the bundle. If you don't want to get the bundle, you just want to do crown knots, for example, just buy the crown knot one. If you want to just do the goddess one from yesterday's tutorial, uh, just get that. If you like square knot things, just get that one. It's up to you. But if you are getting a bundle, do not buy these. You don't need to. You'll be wasting your money buying things you don't need to buy. Um, so let's come back now and continue on. So I'll show you once we've got it at about this sort of size, it's kind of long enough that I can now hold it in my hand. So the way I like to do it, I keep one finger here and one finger here, and essentially I hold it almost like it was a little cigarette. Not that I smoke, I guess. Uh, this is kind of how you would uh, hold one. And then you can work on top. So it's really, really easy. If we take a little look, we can see that this one is nearest this corner here, so that we need to go this direction. So this means we need to go clockwise. So holding it like this, I'll just pull this one over the top here. I'll bring the next one around and over the top there. And then the next one around. And then I'll just pull the last one and go through that little loop into the top. We've had a question from someone, I did see it just a second ago, asking what happens when you don't go clockwise, anti-clockwise, clockwise, anti-clockwise. Anti well, you'll soon see. I'm going to show you that in a minute. It makes for a really fun design feature. But essentially, while I've got it in my hand now, I can just pull all four of my threads nice and firm, never needing to put it down. And ta-da, there you go. There's your next little box knot, um, your little crown knot there. Um, here we go. So now you can see here the corner, it's on, it's, this is the nearest corner, this is the nearest corner, this is the nearest corner, this is the nearest corner. So now we need to go anti-clockwise. So essentially what that creates, which I'll do a few more rounds and then I'll explain exactly to sort of help you. 
uh, understand exactly why it is that you need to go clockwise and anti-clockwise and so forth. Uh, I'll show you in just a minute, but let's just do a couple of little rounds. So now, while I'm just demonstrating, if you've got any questions, feel free to ask away because I'm going to just do a few rounds and I'm going to read through some of the comments uh, that everybody's been uh, posting. For example, Kay, she says, what's everyone working on today? Uh, well, uh, Kay, I'm working on some square knot, uh, some crown knot jewelry. Um, what else? <laughs> uh, if you hadn't noticed, um, what else is everybody else working on? So, you know, comment in, of course. Oh, of course. Don't forget, um, I've almost, uh, Jan says she's working on Quilters Guild work. Uh, she's part of the Quilters Guild. Um, I should pop up on the screen, actually, if you... I'm not going to be able to do it today, unfortunately, because Andrew's not here to prepare the pictures for me. But if you want to take some pictures of what you've been making, what you've been doing, that sort of thing, send them to us at live at beadspider.co.uk and I'll get you on to next week's show. Unfortunately, it's not going to be on this week's show, but hopefully on next week's show. We've already got lots of pictures. Colleen Rowe, who's a regular, she sent lots of pictures in. I have a feeling I may have seen some from Wayne as well, which Wayne is a one of our regulars uh, here as well. Uh, he often sends in pictures. So if you haven't done so, uh, send us in some pictures of what you've been doing, what you've been making, uh, what you've been cooking. We don't care. Whatever it is that you want, um, just send in some pictures. So I'm just continuing doing my uh, little thing here. June says, I'm working on knitting a baby blanket at the moment. That sounds nice. That sounds quite a lot like what Jermaine's been doing for little Leonardo, my uh, my little baby nephew. He's, he's he, he only turned one uh, a few a few weeks ago, a few weeks ago now. Uh, so I'll do one more little row. We can see this is the nearest corner. So again, we'll go round in this direction, like so. Just sort of loop them around. And then last one over and through there. We'll just pull that nice and tight. So it doesn't matter like what order you pull them, just as long as you pull them in the right direction. So the... I know I've rotated slightly, but it doesn't matter too much. And if you find that your knot is getting a little bit twisted like mine is, you can always undo them if you need to. Uh, make sure everything is in the correct position. I've crossed over two of my threads. So this is the nice thing about this thread is it's very, very forgiving if you need to undo and come back a row because you've made a little mistake. Um, so I'll just do it again over the top now. And then again over the top. Because it's quite easy. You know, you might make a mistake. It happens. Over the top. And the last one now over the top. Inside there. And just undo it if you need to. Undo it if you need to. That's the, the great thing about these knots. They come undone really, really easy because of this cord. Um, here, let's pull this, pull this, pull this. And now we're getting ourselves nice and firm now. And this is a good little trick. So see how it looks a little bit wonky? If you hold on it and pull slightly upwards, all four of them slightly upwards, it makes your knot really really tight really really firm in exactly the same way so here we go let's have a little look now i've created the start of my little pattern so you can see it's all green on one side all sand on the other and so forth and so forth so the reason that this works essentially what we're doing is this little thread here is always in this row and this little thread is always here. So by, by going clockwise and anti-clockwise, what we're doing essentially is folding it over the top like this, and this one is kind of going this way, and then this one is just in between. So if I just sort of show you it in super slow as I do it, as we go over the top like this, this is essentially going to end up just coming over to this side, but then because we put this one in as well, it just kind of gets in the way and sort of creates a little loop for it to attach to so that it will stay on that edge. Then we grab our next one. And again, you can see this one here 
is just going to end up coming up over the top of this one here rather than kind of going sideways. And then we do our last little thread here, take that one over the top and into that little square. So see that? Now same on the, the, the edges. This one is going to come over to this side at the bottom and this one's going to come over to this side on the top. So it works out really, really easy. So now let's just pull it nice and tight on all four threads. It doesn't even matter what order you pull them as long as you've got them all nice and tight at the end. Pull, 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 pull. Um, here we go. This is quite fun. Uh, Jillian here says, I used to make these um, when I was a teenager and use them as a keychain. Well, that is another nice fun way that you can, in fact, use this is if you wanted to make it something, um, do you know, bag straps. If you do uh, little handmade bags, for example, if you sew bags or anything like that, these make fantastic bag straps. If you use a nice thick cord as well, uh, they make a really nice little strap for a bag. Um, you can use them as curtain ties, you can use them as belts, all sorts of things like that. But because it's quite chunky, it's a really nice little design. So I'm going to just do a couple more, and then I'm going to show you what happens um, if we don't do anti-clockwise, clockwise, anti-clockwise, clockwise, and so forth. You get a slight change, but hey, that is a really nice little design feature, which you'll soon see, which if you even want to do it in your necklace, it makes for a really nice little feature, sort of just mixing it up. It almost just changes the complete look of your necklace to sort of midway through, and then you can go back to doing it clockwise, anti-clockwise, clockwise, anti-clockwise, whatever it is that you want to do. So as you can see, I've got them all nice and sort of in position. So all sand, all green, all sand, all green. But now what I'm going to do is kind of continue going in the same direction that I was just going. So what I'm going to do now, so you can see I've just done one in anti-clockwise. If you want to do them all uh, clockwise or if you want to do them all anti-clockwise, that's perfectly fine. It's up to you. But I'm going to continue now going anti-clockwise. So if we have a look here, instead of going to the nearest corner, I'm going to end up going to the further corner. So let's go over the top now, this way. Keep this one out of the way. Over the top here, so it's exactly the same. But what we're going to end up with now, which this is something that if you want to keep it um, straight, you need to keep an eye out for. I'll show you what it looks like when you've got just one knot like this, so that if you've made a mistake, you'll know straight away. Um, so if we pull that tight from the top, it still looks exactly the same. So you've got your little Battenberg looking knot. But then when you look at it from the side here, see how this is a bit twisted now? It's kind of coming over towards the left. And then same if we continue around, this one's crossed over from the other side and now it's over on this side. And it starts to create this sort of spiraling effect. So if you have a little look, see how this one's not straight anymore. These are all straight now, this one's all twisted. That means you've probably just done one slightly wrong. So I'll show you what happens if we do it again. So again, I'm going to go entirely clockwise. So again, I'm going to the far way. Instead of the near corner, it's to the far corner. So over the top, over the top, which like I said, this can become a really lovely feature of your design if you want it to be, but if you're wanting it to just stay straight, it's kind of not ideal. So pull that one tight, pull that one tight, pull this one, pull this, get them nice and firm like so. This is like a little masterclass, I suppose, in crown knot. So you can see it's sort of, now there's two on the diagonal. So let's do it again, and you'll start to see what happens in just a minute. So let's keep going around, keep going around, keep going around. Inside that fourth little square, that little loop, pull it tight, pull it tight, pull it tight, pull it tight. All of them nice and tight. Here we go. And then again, clockwise again, uh, anti-clockwise, sorry, anti-clockwise again, take my last little thread over and into that little loop. You see, now that it's like getting longer and longer, I've got more to hold between my fingers. 
See that? And that becomes even easier and easier. At the beginning, it's a little fiddly, which is why I recommend doing it on a, a bead mat or a table or, you know, something like that. Um, but it's very, very easy. Uh, what are people talking about? They're saying they're a, a fan of things. I missed it. Oh, well. Um, so now I'll just continue again. And then you're going to see what happens in just a minute. It looks really, really nice. Uh, very, very effective. So like I said, it doesn't matter which thread you start with. Just pick one of them. And as long as you go through the final loop that you added at the end, you'll find it comes together really nicely. Just get my thumb out of the way there. Keep on going. Oops. Pull a little tighter. Not quite tight enough. There we go. Now it's... Now it's nice and firm. So there we go. And again, we'll do it. And then last, I'll just show you one last time. And into my final little loop here. Which, oh, I should put this in right-handed view, shouldn't I? Seeing as I'm doing it left-handed, I'll put it in right-handed for a couple of iterations, I guess. It's going to be a bit confusing because I've been doing it clockwise this whole time. And then all of a sudden it's going to become anti-clockwise. Uh, sorry, anti-clockwise and it's going to become clockwise. So I'll put it in right-handed view so you can see. Uh, let's just pop it in there. I'll do a couple of iterations in the right-handed view. So I technically, now that it's mirrored, I'm still working in the same direction I was just a second ago, but now it looks like I'm going clockwise. I'm not. I'm still doing it anti-clockwise. It's just that the camera is reversed. So over the top, over the top, over the top, and then take your last one. Try not to get any of your threads off the edge here caught. So see how they can get a bit tangled? Try and keep them nice and separate from one another. And don't let them get, you know, in the way of each other. Pull them nice and tight. And that one tight, and that one tight, and that one tight. There we go. And there we go. And let's just keep going. So I'll do it a few more times. Uh, Jack says, I like the fact you're left-handed because I am too. Well, I, uh, I, I find that it helps that I can pop it into left-hand and right-handed view. Um, I mean, I could do it with just my right hand anyway, but, uh, I think that popping it just by swapping cameras is, is making it a lot easier. Um, but yes, uh, it's, it's definitely, uh, a nice easy way of working is, is, getting be able to see both just because i can click a button and there it is now it looks like i'm right-handed all of a sudden uh you know like the masses like one of the the many <laughs> so again we've got our nice little square and last one i'll go through this loop and then i'm going to show you finally the effect that you get from having it done the same direction again and again and again and again and again are you ready are you ready here it comes so, ready? Ta-da! It gives you a really nice spiral. It gives you a twist. So doesn't that look fabulous that you get this fantastic little um, design, which if you have two different sizes of cord, it actually looks really fantastic because one sticks out and one's a little bit thinner. But there it is. It gives you, so you can see, you can go square, 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 twist, twist, twist. And then if you want, just go back to doing them square again. So you can just add these little twist sections in as though it was entirely intentional. So now I'm going to go back to doing, um, you know, clockwise, anti-clockwise, clockwise, anti-clockwise. So I'll go back the direction I've been going now, like so. And you'll see it just goes back to being into the square mode where they, they sit one on top of the other. So you can really just make it part of your design that if you want your piece to just have random spirals in the middle, you can. It's really, really easy. You just sort of continue on back and forth, switching between them as you do. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a really fun little way. So now 
I'll go back. You can see I'm going back to being clockwise, anti-clockwise, clockwise, anti-clockwise. So I'm going to go now towards the near corner. So essentially, if you want to do twists, you turn towards the far corner. If you want to do your straight lines, you turn towards the near corner because the uh, that will always give you the correct result. So uh, that's the easy way to think about it. Let's zoom out a little. I know I'm a little zoomed in probably. So let's just get that nice and firm. And then you'll soon see it comes back to being square really, really quickly, which... Um, I'll show you a couple other little features of things that you can do as well to make this um, look really, really good as well. So let's come back, back again. So don't forget, this is the Woodland Bundle. This one is potentially my favorite, but that's because I think uh, it's a bit more unisex maybe. So uh, sort of colors that I can I can get away with wearing and so forth. Um, make a really, really nice sort of bundle in a unisex color because this could be men's or women's and plus because it's got those sort of earthy sort of skin tones the the sands the browns that sort of thing they look really really nice on the skin as well so let's just continue on do a few more so because i want to do my squares again let's go towards the near corner around and towards the near corner around and towards the near corner and same again now, I'm going to show you a little trick in a minute on how you can do it if you're doing a necklace piece. So because the necklace needs such a long piece of thread, I'm going to show you it's exactly the same, but I've got a great little tip to make life easy for you. Because otherwise, if you had to deal with eight me long threads every time, my goodness, what a nightmare. There are little um, sort of plastic bobbiny type things that you can get, but if you don't have any, which uh, I didn't when I was at home, uh, so I thought I would fashion myself a little something to make the process easier for me, which if I show you in just a second, I've almost got one of my little love hearts finished, but wait, let's just show how it's looking now that it's back to square mode. See, there you go. And so you've got it now in a nice little twist and it just gives you a really nice design effect. It's just a simple little thing that you can do and creates uh, a really nice effect in the middle of your design. And when you if you do it in a way that you end up so that it goes back to green, you can continue like that and it just looks absolutely fabulous. Doesn't that, doesn't that look good? That, that worked out so beautifully. I'm really pleased with that. Um, so, I'll show you now. This is my, my clever trick to how I did this. And then I'm going to show you some of the jewellery because I didn't get an opportunity to show you. Actually, I'll start with that. Uh, yesterday's tutorial, if you didn't see it, it was making one of these little fellows just here so see this this is our goddess bracelet using half hitch macrame uh, this was yesterday's tutorial so if you missed that one we did it a bit differently where it was a, a premiere go and check it out go have a little look um, they're really really nice little designs super sparkly like this and this zigzag is made with half hitches so you can do them with multiple colors if you want to like so See these ones where they've got the, the color on the outside? Or if you want, you can do each of the little blocks in colors. So there you can see I've done my triangle here in green. Here I've done it in clear. So it looks it looks quite nice. These are really, really fun bracelets, which of course you don't have to use the crystals as well. You can use larger ones. You can have big spaces between. It's a really fun design to try and experiment with. So I know we sort of just show you the basics in that video, but you can also keep it so that it's really sort of wavy and soft if you want to have lots of space or if you want them nice and tight to each other, you can have them nice and tight. Um, use whatever beads that you want. Um, also, if you missed my tutorial on Monday, my square knot macrame one, uh, I showed you how to do the flat square knots. I showed you how to do the spiral square knots. I showed you how to do two color flat square knots as well. Um, plus, actually, there's my, my little one that I was doing with my lovely crystally heart. I showed you two ways to connect 
to these. And I also did two color spiral, which I think looks really cool as well. That was everything in the last few days. Um, but here we go. Now it's time to finally show you that little tip that I have. So here is the 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 heart pendant that I've been making. Don't worry, I'm not jumping ahead. Uh, I will come to this. Um, but yeah, here we go. You can see I've made that glorious pendant. But because, like I said, you need to use so much thread to to actually make the design eight meters. What I did was fashioned myself some little cardboard cutout fellows. So what I've done essentially is. I probably made them a bit too big, but I wanted them to be nice and easy to see on the camera, was I just used some old cardboard, cut it into a V and a V on both sides, and then just put a slit down the middle. So the end of my thread went into the slit. I went wrap, 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 all the way around, and then put it into here. And then what I've done, because look, look how tangled this is, and that's just these little short cords, means I can undo this quite easily. Uh, and sort of continue on with my with my design that I've been making uh, without having to deal with such unwieldy large amounts of of cord. So if it does get in a tangle, it just makes it way way easier to get it undone again. See, look at this. It was it was a big fat mess, but because they're only quite short little threads, it's not nearly as bad as it seemed like it might have been. Um, so where am I at? I'm almost I'm almost there now. We're almost completely untangled. There we go. There we are. And now, as you can see, just pull this tight. You can see I, I haven't, uh, I wasn't aware of where I was up to. So let's just, where's my last little thread? Oh, he's caught. He is caught, actually, inside my knot. Let's just pull him out. Pull him out of there. Come on, little friend, out you get. There we go. Should be nicer into position and again you can really easily just undo your knots if you need to and then just sort of continue along working without such an unwieldy thread i should have given myself a little extra thread i think whoops it's unraveling a little well this is disaster it's not going to plan in the slightest is it because i undid one knot what am i doing but yeah it's i shouldn't have put it in a bag here we go so here's one here's one there we go we're almost there now this is just a bit caught. So this one's fine. This one goes, which one's this? Oh, it's a bit unraveled. Through here, bring this one over there. There we go. And now I've got my, whoops, little pieces, I dropped one. So yeah, you can see they just come undone. So if you run out of thread, you can just unravel yourself some, give yourself some extra thread, undo it, and then pop it nicely into that little slit at the top. And now it's ready to continue. So if we have a little look, I've got my little necklace like this. And then I can just continue as I usually would, doing my knots exactly as I would. Uh, here we go. Let's just get this one here. Maybe I'll give myself a little bit extra space on this one. So yeah, just undo twice. And then through there. There we go. And now I can just continue on. So I'll go over the top here, over the top of these two, take this one over here. And then all I've got to do is just make sure I leave myself whoops, uh, a little bit extra when I'm going over the top so that this one will fit inside of this little loop exactly the same. And then as we pull that tight, this one's gotten a little bit caught around the other. There we go. And then as we pull that one tight, you can see we create that little knot. And exactly as before, we can sort of just continue along. So obviously, I know it's a little bit more unwieldy when you're doing um, all of those different ones, but it works out quite nicely in the end. I mean, you can even do it with a really long piece if you wanted to. And you just sort of get yourself nicely into position like that. Go over the top and this needs a little bit more thread. So let's just undo it. Put it back into that top slit. Oops. Go on there. There we go. And now there's our last little loop that we created at the beginning. We'll just go through there. 
with the piece that we've got. This is why it's better if you make them smaller, because then you've only got to go through a small loop at the top and then just pull them nice and tight. So this one goes this way, this one goes this way. Plus, because they're a little bit heavier, you can sort of see how this one that's off the table, gravity is helping to, to pull the thread for me. So that works nicely as well. So there we go, and just continue along. And then you just continue, 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 really, really easy, exactly the way you have been just before making your little Battenberg looking square knots until eventually you've got your, your lovely design. So let me show you now how, um, oops, dropped my thread. Uh, let me show you now how to add your pendant. So I'm going to use a red one, seeing as I'm almost there. I absolutely adore this red one, which, like I said, because Chinese New Year is coming up um, next week, next Friday is Chinese New Year, these two red colors I thought were absolutely perfect. I might make this into a bracelet, actually, but I'll show you for um, the sake of it. See, look, it's, it's just the right size for a bracelet for me, just there. Uh, it looks really, really lovely. Um, but yeah, there's, I'll show you now how to add your little pendant. So depending, first thing you need to do when you're about to add your little pendant is to decide which color you want to be at the front and which color you want to be at the sides. So if I just, oops, I dropped my pink one. Here we go. So if we have a look here, see how I've chosen that I want my pink on the, the sort of the, the mauve color to be at the front and the dark color to be on the sides. That's the decision you need to make because once you've done it, it stays that way. It kind of can't unravel. It stays exactly as it as it was once you've done it. So what I'm going to do, I want to have it like this, I think. I think I prefer it with the brighter red sticking out uh, in the front. So what you do, which it's super easy, which again, because this cord is woven, you can just paint this last little end with a bit of super glue and it goes nice and firm as though it was a little needle. See that? So what I'm going to do is take one thread through the hole of my pendant and then I'll take the other thread. So see how they're, because they're, they've been going square, one's on the back and one's on the front. I'll take the other one through the other hole, in through the same hole, sorry, in the opposite direction. So as we pull that now, that will just loop onto the bottom of our little piece just here. So as you can see, it's nice. Uh, it's not quite tight though. So the way that we fix that is by just tying a little knot. But what we're going to do, because this is going to be one side, this thread, it's kind of all the way out the edge. So what we need to do is tuck it under inside of this loop. So see how we've created a loop at the top of our pendant here? We just stick our cord inside there, pull that tight like so, so that it's all the way through. And now what I'm going to do is pull these a little tighter so that my thread is still through. And now once it's on top, you can just tie a knot, tie these two threads together. So take one, take the other, tie them, nice and firm, get everything really, really firm. So if this isn't quite tight against your, your pendant, you just pull this one a little more, pull this one a little bit more, pull them both nice and firm, and then tighten that little edge, get this fella all the way through, and that will nicely lock that into position exactly where we want it to be, which one side you'll see doesn't sit quite as nicely and the other sits really, really nicely. We'll just rotate him nicely into the center. And then that's sort of how you know which is the back and which is the front. But once you've done this, essentially we've got one thread here, one thread here, one on the left and one on the right. And so it's really easy to just begin doing your crown knots once more. So if I just ignore this little piece uh, here, we don't need to worry about him. I'll just go over the top, over the top of this one, bring this one over the top here, and then into this little loop that we've created. So then as I pull those all nice and tight, it will create that first little crown knot. So again, it's a little bit fiddly to get the first knot happening. But once you have it, 
you'll be well on your way. Really, really easy to do. So it's important, there we go, pull that tight, pull this tight, and now you can see I've got my first little box sitting just on the top, ready to continue working from. So now I'll take this one, so we can see this is the near corner, so we'll go in, whoops, I'll zoom out a little more again, so you can see what I'm doing. I've got my four threads here, so we'll go towards the near corner, towards the near corner, towards the near corner, and over the top, and through here. Pull it all nice and tight, nice and tight, nice and tight, pull it all the way in, hold it. There we go, pull, 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 pull it nice, all the way, and there we go. Now we've got our next one nice and firm. So I'll do it again. So this time again, towards the near side, if you're doing it the square way, towards the near side, towards the near side, and inside there. So now let's just pull this one together again. And then after this, essentially, you just keep repeating, repeating, repeating until you've added on the entirety of your pendant. If, though, per chance, you're not a big fan of that, there is another way that you can add a pendant on if you want to do it that way instead. So much like, uh, I quite like the sort of the V shape that you get by doing this, which if we have a look at the other one that I made, here's one I made earlier. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, you just continue on as then do your second side to match the first. So I'll just pop that out of the way, but let me just show you something. So see with this one how it comes to that nice little V, like this here. Though, if you don't quite like this, there is another solution. So what you can do is use a bale, a little pendant bale, like this one just here. So for example, if we grab ourselves a little heart, like so, you can just open that little bale up, it's a nice sparkly crystal fella, open him up, go over the top, and essentially attach your little heart pendant to, I need to open him even more it seems, he's got a big, big crystally gap, so into there, into there, squeeze it closed, and now you've got a removable pendant. So if you feel like you've got if you've got like a really nice any any pendant I guess you could just hang it straight from there and it looks really really nice really really classy. Let me just show you it. I'll hold it up. Let's find my face and I'll hold it up as best I can. There you go. Look at that. And then it will sit like this on a on a nice little on a little cord. So there's that nice little pendant. Oh, you can see me straight through. There you go. <laughs> um, but yeah. It's a really, really easy way to just pop a pendant on if you want to, which um, I have a feeling I should have taken note of what the product code of this one was. I didn't put it in the, in, the, in the product category. So let's just pop back. And then if you want to change your pendant, say you go, I'm going to go for gold today. Just open up and change it. And then, ta-da, now you've got a gold one. Doesn't that look nice? Oh, the gold and the purple goes really nicely, actually. That looks nice. I really like that. Um, so yeah, there you go. That's that finish just there. And now let me show you how to finish this little fellow off. It's really, really easy to do. No problem at all. Um, I just realized I should pop these little things here in case you don't know what it is I'm using. Whoops. Here we go. Um, so yeah, uh, if you want to make everything that's in all three of this week's tutorials, don't forget to go and have a look at our little um, jewelry makers, macrame jewelry makers collection. Uh, it's from the link in the description if you want to get one of those. So I'm going to show you now how you would finish this off. It's really easy. This is the clasp that you get in your kit. So essentially, it's one of these. You get two of these in your kit. Um, maybe one for a bracelet and one for a necklace. Who knows? But they are really, really clean, really neat finishes that you get. It's got a magnet in the center that is super strong. See, like this. 
really, really strong magnets. They, they work from quite a distance. Uh, you just have to glue your cord into the end. So if we have a little look, here's the first end of the one that I have been making. Um, and essentially, what we're going to do is just add some glue, which super glue isn't the right one to use. You want to use a craft glue. So um, F6000, that sort of thing. Uh, let's just get rid of that little fella. We don't need him in the way anymore. Uh, yeah, if you've got F6000, E6000, that sort of thing, silicon-based um, or epoxy resin type thing, uh, you can just put some glue inside here, press this all the way in, because we've chosen the exact right size for the one mil cord, there it is, and it gives you a really, really clean, neat finish ready to put onto your necklace once the glue is dried, which make sure it's one of those um, glues that takes quite some time to dry. It's better if it's a long drying one because that will stick to the metal. Um, super glue doesn't stick to metal, so you can't use that one so well. Uh, but yeah, then it gives you this really neat finish. You do the same on the opposite end. And then when you go to wear it, you just click the two ends together and it's done. You can see uh, on this little piece, this is another one I've done which is very, very similar. This one has a twist lock clasp. But let me show you one really nice little design feature. This is with a thicker cord, by the way. So you can see this is the one mil cord that you get in with your kit. And this is with a 1.5 mil thickness. Um, oh, here we go. Uh, Leslie... Oh, no, she's talking to Doris. Okay, never mind. Uh, I was going to say, if you're wondering what our website address is, I'll just pop my face up uh, just here. Wait a second. Uh, if you have a little look, it's... No, it's over there. Just down there, beadspider.co.uk. If you want to find our website, the homepage of our website, um, uh, it's right there. Uh, but let me show you something now. Uh, as promised, let me show you something really cool that you can do with this. It's another way. So you know how I showed you with my little sand piece how you can incorporate the twists, which looks absolutely gorgeous, actually. I think that looks amazing. Uh, if there is another way, though. So for example, and this is a, a another little feature, I suppose, of this particular um, type of knot, is that... It's really easy to, especially with a clasp like this or a clasp that sort of locks them together. So if you use like a lobster claw or something like that, you can very, very easily create your own twist like so just by twisting. Wait, let's zoom out so you can really see how I've done it. So there it is straight. Zoom, twist, 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 twist. Looks like a barber's pole. Looks lovely. Really like that. And then all you got to do is just lock them in. It stays nice and twisted. And the great thing about this particular design, if you want, see how stretchy it is? Once it's made and sort of done like that, just twist that into position again. You can, whoops, didn't quite stay on that time. My twist lock untwisted. But anyway, you can stretch it and it will just fit straight over the top of your, your hand there. So even works like a little bangle piece too. So nice and easy to get it to stay on. Uh, and then you can just sort of twist it if you want to. Wear it twisted. So it gives it a really nice little effect like that too. Um, otherwise, if you prefer, have it straight. Do whatever do whatever you prefer. If you, if you like it, the straight version, have it straight. But yeah, this one's the thicker version. So wait for it. Here we go. This is what it looks like in the normal. And I should have done a piece with half mil. I can imagine it's really dainty, really fine, because if we look at the square knot version, uh, this is the square knot macrame I did the other day. This is the one mil, which, of course, you get uh, four colors of this with your kit, or is it more? Four colors with this, and you get two colors of the half mil. This is the difference in one mil and half mil. So imagine how dainty and nice a cord you would be able to make uh, with this as well. So um, it's a really, really nice little knot there. Um, I hope you, you've you kind of enjoyed that one. There's quite a bit that we've shown. Um, I'll just tell you one last time really quickly, just looking at the website, you're probably sick to death of seeing about this little kit, but 
in case you've only just popped on and you haven't seen it yet, uh, if you click the link at the bottom, which actually there's another link which I'll tell you about, uh, it says sign up for more tutorials and newsletters and things like that. If you click on that, um, sign up to our newsletter. That's the best way to know what videos are coming and when. Uh, let's pop over to my face instead. Uh, yeah, if you want to know what we're going to be doing and when, uh, sign up to our email newsletter. But also, if you sign up to that, we give you a £5 voucher to try out any of our beading patterns. So you don't have to, um, you know, buy anything or anything like that. If you want to... Uh, if you want to try out some of our beading patterns, which we have lots of diagrams, lots of our demonstrations, I show diagrams. Like, for example, uh, I can even show you one. Um, here we go. Let's pop the instruction up on the corner if I can. Is it going to work? Not today. Oh, that's why. Oops. Pop my instruction up. See, look, here's an example of the, the little instructions I do. Come on now. You gonna work for me? Here we go. See, look here. We've got there. There's a, an example of the the sort of diagrams I often put in. These are some of my my poorer ones, my original ones. They're much much better now. Uh, these are the sorts of diagrams that you get in our pattern. So you can get that from the the bead spider website. That that voucher if you want to get it um, to try out the the instructions for free. Five pounds worth voucher. Um, now. Uh, as I said, I will show you on the website really, really quickly. If you click the link that says check out the kit or whatever, all of the designs that I've been making today, um, all this week actually, so yesterday's tutorial as well, uh, you can make them all with the one collection. So whichever collection you like best, or if you like multiple collections, or like some of you did, get all four collections, Get because you can very easily mix and match them. Like for example, uh, the blue one has a really nice navy that goes with like the sand color. The, the the purple goes with the blue as well. You can see you've got a full rainbow of colors. It sort of starts in your pinks to red tones to browns, which goes towards your yellows and your br and your oranges and things like that. Uh, sorry, your yellow, brown, greens. And then as you get more into like bluey greens, blue bluey purplies, and then you've got purpley blue towards back towards your pink tones and your whites and things. So you do get lots and lots of variety. But like I said, each one of them does include two of the crystal connectors. So you've got the heart connector there. This one's got the, the purple version has the linked hearts. It's also got that little champagne one. You've got your snake. You get that gorgeous violet heart. You've got some three by four mil crystals. You've got four different colors of your smooth and slinky one mil. Oops, there's a little pop-up that wasn't meant to be there. Uh, then you've got your, your two half mils. You've got your clasps, which you get two of those. You get two buttons and completely free all three of the instructions as well. Full 100% discount on those ones. So yeah. Otherwise, feel free to have a little look. We've got the 3x4 donut bundle. We've got lots of crystals. We've got the clasps. The connectors are all here as well. Everything is here. The crystal hearts. You know, create your own bundle if you prefer. Uh, but no discount then. Uh, big, big discount. This one, it's £36.70 value for £19.99. So yes, that is Macrame Week. Come to an end. It's over. We've done it. Uh, you know, I hope you've all enjoyed a bit of macrame over the last few days or so. Uh, you know, it's it's been a, a nice week of, of sort of knotting in macrame. I really like doing macrame just because it's it's quite repetitive and you can sort of do it while watching TV. Like, for example, this one, uh, I, I sort of made this last weekend uh, while I was watching... Uh, movies with Maxine. We we watched Groundhog Day, for example, um, on 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 the on the second, which was good fun. Uh, but yeah, so just while I was sitting there, I was just weaving away, weaving away, weaving away, and creating a really nice little uh, finished piece. So they they do come together really really quickly, really easily, and things. Uh, but yes, next week we will be back. Unfortunately, I didn't get to show off everyone's pictures, but I'll just mention it really, really quickly. If you want to be on the show, just send us your pictures to 
live at beanspider.co.uk. Whatever you've been doing, whatever you've been making, next week we will be able to do it. Um, so hopefully, you know, I can show off your pictures like I usually do. I wasn't able to this week because Andrew wasn't here to prepare them all for me uh, so that I could show them. But anyway, uh, that's it for this week. Next week, Jermaine is going to be uploading one of her tutorials, much like how we did yesterday. Uh, she's going to be uploading a tutorial. I think the plan is that for Wednesday. And then on Friday, so we're only going to have one live tutorial this week coming, uh, you know, for various reasons. I'm not going to be able to be available on Wednesday, unfortunately. Uh, so we're doing another one of our, like we did this week, um, YouTube-style videos, which we'll put the link over on Facebook and send an email out about. And then I'll be back on Friday for, um, seeing as it's just a couple of days before um, Valentine's Day, I'll be doing our romance bracelet, which is a gorgeous crystal bracelet. It doesn't really have anything to do with Valentine's Day other than the name being romance, so you can wear it every day of the week um, whenever you want, not just for Valentine's Day. It looks gorgeous. That's what's coming next Friday. Um, there's, well, there's, there's lots of lots of good videos coming up over the next few weeks and months and whatnot. Twice a week we'll be, we'll be doing our videos. That's the plan for now. Uh, we will let you know if that changes, of course. Uh, but yeah, I hope you've all had lots and lots of fun this week, uh, joining me for the macrame. Uh, make sure if you're going to get one of those kits, get in quick because they have been selling very, very well. And we're quite limited on how many of the little connectors that we can do to, to make them. Like, for example, our snake is, is already almost kind of low in stock. I see lots of you have been ordering. Uh, I've been inundated, actually. Uh, but yes, lots and lots of you still here. So thank you all for joining me. Um, I will definitely be back next Friday. We will have that tutorial on Wednesday, though, on YouTube for you to watch at any time that you like, but um, we'll put that one live, probably same as we did this week, Wednesday though, uh, at 3 p.m. Um, so yeah, thanks. We've got Kay still here, Jan is still here, Julie's here, Monica, Doris, uh, Wayne I think is still around, yep. Uh, Carla, she asks, do you ship to the US? Yes, Carla, we do ship to the US. We have a flat rate of £6.50 if you are... Um, ordering but that is untracked so six pounds fifty flat rate for the untracked service if you want tracked it's free at the time of purchase we just send you an invoice after we've packaged everything up and weighed it we put it on the scales find the least expensive way that we can possibly get it sent to you and send you an invoice for that amount so essentially if you want it tracked we sort of figure it out for you tailor tailor shipping as it were to get it as inexpensive as possible but that starts at about 10 pounds and 5p um, otherwise flat rate six pounds 50 uh there so yes um that will just thought i would mention that one really really quickly uh but yeah thank you very very much for joining me this week uh for macrame week i've had lots and lots of fun and i hope you have too thanks very much i will see you next week have a lovely weekend and start of next week bye bye oh no didn't work ha huh. didn't press the little fade button i need to click that one missed it oh there we go thanks very much for watching bye bye